Welcome in, Dog Nation. How's everybody doing here uh, on a lovely Wednesday night, a news drop Wednesday night. Uh, everybody's watching the player traffic. I call it player migration, uh, much as what we uh, devised in our headline for today. But what we're looking at is kind of the splintering of the national championship roster. And folks, everything's just going to be just fine. I I think I see a lot of things, you know, off the mark and on the mark on social media about these players. Uh, I think there was a tweet uh, from, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. That's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. We're going to talk about um, kind of how this 2022 class, an unprecedented 2022 class in my mind, was really built for this. It was built to offset the roster migration uh, that's happening in Athens. It's happened in Athens. You know, if you got your if you got your ear to the grind like a fellow like myself does, the the situations with JT Daniels, the situation with uh, Jermaine Burton and some of these other guys, they were not surprises. Uh, it's one of those things that you kind of hear things going down the line and you want to see whether that bears fruit and whether it um, kind of goes kind of goes along. Um, goes forward kind of the what, what you're trending. I think there's I want to bring up a, a, a stat, a, a tweet here from. Uh, Cedric Von Prawn Granger, the very popular, the well loved, the really crazy good uh, redshirt freshman center for Georgia. Uh, he said, Some of the things I'm reading are sickening. Uh, I think it was echoed by Jamari Salyer as well. Um, and, and, folks, I, I don't know what to tell you. There are people that look at these players and they wonder why are they leaving or they wonder if they want to leave a national championship defense team, that means that, hey, they brought. Uh, they brought Bulldog Nation, they brought Dog Nation, the championship that everybody so uh, supremely and, uh, I mean, innately uh, cherished and sought after and looked for. And if they feel like there's a better chance for them somewhere else, if they feel like there's a better chance to perfect their profession, which is a football player for the next level, then that's certainly their right to do so. Uh, and But I think I want to come to this tweet right here. I think I found it. Um, it was from former Georgia, former Georgia, um, uh, wide receiver, now a very good high school coach in the state of Georgia, um, Israel Troop. And he has this thought where he says, took us four decades to finally win. And some of you are mad as if Georgia doesn't recruit or use the portal. And you wonder why student athletes transfer or opt out. Do you care about them and their happiness or what they can do for you? I thought that was very well said, uh, extremely well said by Israel Troop right there, Coach Troop. Uh, kind of like the sentiment of what's going on. But, folks, um, in our program today, I've got a story that just went up on Dog Nation. Interesting how I kind of timed it to drop sometime this evening uh, to kind of like offset some of the paranoia, I think. Sometimes uh, I think one of, one of the roles here is the recruiting reporter for Dog Nation is when everybody – I uh, sees the sky falling. I guess I got to come with the hook and ladder and the bucket truck to kind of put out the fears of everybody's paranoia. And I, I wrote about this because I want you guys to imagine you're at your favorite airport. You see two terminals up in front of you. One of them says uh, the departures. One of them says the arrivals. And what I did in that piece, and you can find it now on dognation.com, is I listed the massive uh, championship show dogs leaving the program. And I think that number now is at 23. I think it'll probably get to 27 or 28 uh, in short order, but, uh, or at least by the time spring practice rolls around. And then you see the list of players coming in. And for me, it's a chance to really look at what Georgia has done over the last several cycles and kind of dial in what we're seeing here. And folks, I'll be very frank. I'm going to quote uh, some of the, some of the really important uh some of the really important thoughts that I, I dug up. Number one is I don't think, uh, I think this 2022 recruiting class, the signing class of which uh, 18 guys are already in Athens. There's actually 19 early enrollees, but I think there are 18 scholarship guys that are in Athens right now. And uh, to put that into perspective, Georgia only signed 20 high school prospects in all of 2021. And yet there are already 18 early enrollees in Athens right now, getting better, lifting, acclimating to the college experience. In my opinion, it looks like the most well-rounded um, Georgia signing class of the Kirby Smart era. They've got a top 100 recruit 
at every position except wide receiver. And we'll get into that in the next couple of days on Dog Nation. Um, everybody's going to point to it. and They're going to say, Jeff, what about the 2018 signing class? That was the mega one. That was the first one that pulled um, the first one that pulled the number one recruiting crown away from the Alabama Crimson Tide. Georgia had seven five stars in this class. Neat little sidebar to that in the 2018 class, uh, mind you. I beg your pardon if that was a little misleading, but um, of those seven five stars that Georgia signed, folks will remember Justin Fields, Cade Mays, Britton Cox, uh, others, so on and so on. Well, those guys, uh, five out of those seven never even never even lasted to the 2021 season in Athens. I thought it was ironic when I looked at the 17 highest rated recruits that Georgia signed in that this is going to be the one class year, which it turned out to be the one, but 11 of the top 17 uh, signees in that class weren't even on the field at Lucas Oil Stadium. This is without a doubt, in my opinion, the best defensive class of the smart era. There are two five stars at defensive tackle that's, uh, or for the defensive line, that's Marvin Jones Jr., who'll be the edge. That's Michael Williams. There's also um, there's also Big Bear Alexander, another five star on the Rivals.com network. You also have uh, five star at safety. You have two five stars at corner. Um, the other thing I want to bring into mind is I think I said this a couple of weeks ago is Georgia has never brought in a pair of pass rushers quite like Marvin Jones Jr. and Michael Williams. Uh, Mikel, uh, and is probably going to be one of the top five, top 10 players in the country when the fi final rankings are released. Uh, he looked like the best player to me at the all American bowl out in San Antonio. But the thing is, is the sizes, uh, the size of Marvin Jones, he's about six, five, almost six, five, two fifty two or so. Mikel is about six, four and a half, six, five, uh, two sixty or so. These guys look sort of like Trayvon Walker did coming out of high school. But yet they move like maybe a, maybe a, a Nolan Smith or an Adam Anderson would, considering all the weight they're carrying. And one of the things I, I, I did on that story that I want to kind of you guys to get a good sense of is it looks like there's like a teeter totter effect happening here. There's a yin and yang, as I called it, where a lot of these positions where Georgia's losing a lot of players, they're basically restocking or re upping the program with a similar talent or even better talents across the board. Uh, 23 departures, 10 of those are on offense, roll through them. JT Daniels, James Cook, Zamir White, Jamari Salyer, Justin Schaefer, John Fitzpatrick, Jermaine Burton, George Pickens, Jalen Johnson, uh, Justin Robinson. There's a combination of NFL and portal guys there. There are 13 guys off the defense. Jordan Davis, Trevon Walker, Devontae Wyatt, Nicobe Dean, Channing Tindall, Quay Walker, uh, Latavius Brini, Lavoisier Carroll, Lewis Seen, Darian Kendrick, Jalen Kimber, and Amir Speed. Jake Camarda. Again, it's a combination of uh, portal guys and also NFL guys. And that's a part where you guys might get a little get a little nervous. Those are some tremendous players. But uh, when you balance that out with all the arrivals, you got a Gunner Stockton, uh, a four star All American. You've got four offensive linemen that are already on campus right now. You've got Griffin Scroggs, Ernest Green, Alu Ba, and you've also got Jacob Hood. You've got Oscar Delp. Uh, you've got C.J. Smith and Denylon Morissette. Those are eight guys on offense. They're 10 guys on defense. Folks, if you were at the championship gala and celebration on Saturday, uh, you got to take a look at it. And the one, the Bulldogs that were in the gray jumpsuits, well, those were the early enrollees that were kind of sitting in the back behind uh, and the player bleachers behind Kirby Smart. Big Bear Alexander, Michael Williams, Sean Washington, C.J. Washington, C.J. Madden, uh, Jalen Walker, Dalen Everett, Malachi Starks, and Ja'Cory Thomas. Also the number one punter in the world. I call him the number one punter in the world because he's from Australia, and he was the number one player in the country this year on the 24-7 Sports Composite. There's six more guys, including two more five, including one more five-star and a couple more, uh, all, three more All-Americans that are, that are inbound, uh, to use kind of the flight traffic metaphor I was going with there. There's also three commitments in the class, Dar Darius Smith, um, Jordan James, and Dylan Bell. And uh, a lot in a lot of these cases, the departures and the arrivals are kind of evening out. Maybe the one position where that's not happening is across the offensive line. Uh, there, are already, um, there are already four arrivals, one inbound player in Drew Bobo. 
and then there's only two departures. I would look to be for there to be some more migration from the offensive line room uh, in the weeks to come. But I want to I want to put these points into perspective as how I kind of dialed up and couched this class. If you looked at Georgia from 26 to 2021, 2016 to 2021, 2016 with Kirby Smart's first recruiting class, they had an average ranking of 2.8 in the country. That included two number one overall classes. Um, in that time, they signed 11 defensive prospects in six years, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. They signed 11 defensive prospects with a five-star rating. Folks in this class alone, Georgia has signed five defensive players with a five-star rating. Looking at the, the top 50 players, those are really the elite players in the country, the best of the best. Georgia signed 16 of those guys, 16 of those guys in six combined years from 2016 to 2021. And when you look at that this year, this, this class itself has seven top 50 defensive players, seven top 50 defensive players. That's almost half as many as Georgia put together in those six previous signing classes, those gaudy classes. So you want to talk about Georgia being able to defend its national title? They're certainly going to be able to defend on that side of the ball. I also wanted to place a special emphasis here in this, as we're talking about this subject on the elite, and I'm going to air quote that thing, elite defensive back class for Georgia in the 2022 cycle. Uh, Georgia signed seven top 100 players that played defensive back. Every year, Kirby Smart was the head coach at Georgia prior to this year. This year, Georgia has signed four. They signed three five-star defensive backs in the previous six cycles um, before this class. Uh, they signed three five-star defensive backs, Malachi Starks, Dalen Everett, and also Jaheim Singletary in this class. Uh, they'd signed two cornerbacks, Tyson Campbell and Keeley Ringo, that were five stars. One was in 2018, one was in 2020. Uh, Georgia already has two five-star cornerbacks in this class. If that doesn't make folks feel better, I don't know what to tell you. The other thing to bring, in, to, bring to mind here is um, this is the first class where Georgia has – and I'm going to tell you, I, I ex fully expect it's not going to be outlandish in my mind to expect Georgia's defense to be just as nasty in 2024. That's the 2024 season when a lot of these guys are juniors as this defense was in 2021. I certainly feel that way. That's because this year's class will not have to cover for a weak defensive back group where they're going to have to play some walk ons and some moving some guys in and out in key spots that only started a couple of games on the year or bringing in a, a, a bringing in a transfer portal guy like Darian Kendrick, Georgia is going to be able to match up the defensive linemen, the pass rush, the linebackers. Of course, there's not a Nicobe Dean in this class, but there's certainly a guy in Jalen Walker that's going to create his own niche at Georgia. C.J. Washington, uh, C.J. Madden. You've got Marvin Jones Jr. You've got Michael Williams. You've got Big Bear Alexander. And then the plethora of defensive backs. And I'm going to call it a mother load of defensive backs with Malachi Starks, Julian, um, he calls himself Blanket Lately Humphrey, uh, Dalen Everett, Jaheim Singletary, Ja'Cory Thomas, uh, all those guys together. It is a phenomenal uh, defensive back class for Georgia. Uh, the best one by far and by anyone's measure of the Kirby Smart era at Georgia. And if that wasn't enough to start everybody talking about the show, uh, I had to kind of sprint out the gates on this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about what we're discussing. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, from everybody out there, maybe it's venting needed after seeing guys portal out, or maybe it's expectations that the 2020 class was kind of 2022 class was built for this to built to be able to offset a lot of these big time defensive line linebacker migrations. And they're really they're called promotions. That's what these guys come to Georgia to do. They've won a national championship. They've got first round, second round draft grades. That's what everybody wants when they sign at the University of Georgia. Everybody's going to be on their social media that really don't can't, can't take stock and place the proper perspective on this situation about, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to go on? Well, what's going to go on is Georgia's going to keep playing and performing and recruiting uh, at a higher level than they ever had. Because what's that Bruno Mars song, uh, where he, that line where he goes, I'm a dangerous man with some money in my pocket? Well, Kirby Smart, folks, is going to be a dangerous coach with a national championship in his pocket. That is the belief here of the Before the Hedges program. 
I am Jeff Sintel, your intrepid host and reporter. I want to say shout out to everybody that I've seen lately over the last couple of weeks. I've given you guys confetti at Lucas Oil Stadium. I've high-fived you at Hard Rock Stadium. I've seen you in casinos uh, in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. I've seen you guys uh, in downtown uh, Indianapolis by St. Elmo's and by 47 Prime. I've seen you guys at the championship celebration on Saturday where I met a guy, I want to say Purnell. If you're out there, Purnell, I just want to give you a shout out. Uh, he had a something together that looked like a, it looked like it belonged in a museum. It was a football, a Georgia football made out of pine straw. It was immaculate. It was incredible. And it was wonderful to see a South Georgia fella toting that thing around Sanford Stadium after Georgia celebrated the first national championship in 41 years. Uh, guys, we got a lot of stuff to get to today. We're going to go over 2022. We're going to go over 2023. Before you do, speaking of having something in your back pocket, I've got something in my back pocket as well, and that is an interview. We're going to start rolling a lot of these out uh, from the All-Americans in San Antonio and Florida. That's what I spent about 14, 15 days away from my family for. Uh, let's look at the first one right here. This is with Oscar Delp right after he played his final game as a high school football player inside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Oscar covers a lot of subjects, what it was like going to be moving in the next day to the University of Georgia, and really his thoughts on the overall 2022 signing class and those dudes that were out there with him in San Antonio. Oscar is always a great interview. He's very candid. He's a polished communicator. And let's take a look at that right now. Yeah, the uh, I, mean, I, I saw a real genuine moment with you after the game, Oscar. You you seemed like you wanted to sign something or give away something to every kid out there. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was here and when I was a young kid, and just that that stuff means the world to those kids, and it's something they'll never forget about. So I, I just love making those kids' days and kind of making an impact on them, so they'll uh, remember me and uh, always anybody see me when they see me on TV and all that. Anybody say anything really cool? Did they say thank you? Did anybody like melt your heart with something they said or anything like I that? I mean, they, they were all super sweet. I mean, the younger kids were just in awe and just super, super happy just to get my autograph. And I was signing shoes, which was crazy because they I mean, looked like a brand new pair of shoes. Some kid just got out signed them. So I was, you really sure you want me to sign these? But they're, they're serious. So, I mean, it was, it was crazy. Oscar, I think the next thing you'll do in your life is you'll go moving to Georgia. What does it mean to you now to be in this next phase of your career? Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. I mean, it's it's a big step. Uh, tomorrow I literally land and drive up there and me and Gunner move in. So uh, it'll, it's, a, it's a big thing. But, I mean, I'm ready to get there and get to work and kind of get to that, that next level. When you see everybody here kind of collectively gather together, you see the talents and skills in everybody, what goes on goes through your mind about, man, just being part of all this? Yeah, I mean, it's just a brotherhood. I mean, it's kind of like – Someone was saying, like, kind of the Heisman room. I mean, everyone here is going to remember that for the rest of their high school. I mean, we've always got each other, uh, Snapchats, phone numbers. I mean, we're always going to be staying in touch throughout the years, and it's going to be really cool to kind of see where everyone ends up in the next five, six years. How would you feel about Ernest coming into the class? Kind of the missing piece, one of those really elite offensive linemen. No, yeah, I mean, I was really excited. That was one guy, Coach Smart, and uh, Coach Harley were really pushing me to talk to and recruit because, I mean, he was, he was definitely one of those, that missing piece. And, I mean, he's, he's a great player, and uh, it's a big pickup for us. When did you know he was coming? He told me this week when we were here, he told me he already signed, so I was really excited. What well, went through your mind? Did you do anything? Did you dap him up? What did you just say, man? Not, yeah, I mean, I, I, I dapped him up, shook his hand. I was like, let's go. And I, I mean, I had a good feeling on it, and then when he finally told me, I was, I was just really excited. Okay, Oscar, one thing we've done with everybody this week is I want you to – it's kind of a stream of consciousness question. I'm going to go through every guy that's here, and I want you to talk to me about the first things that come to mind about all your future teammates that are here this week. Uh, first up, let's start with Ernest. What goes through your mind with that guy? Yeah, I mean, he's he's super humble, uh, super genuine, uh, great player, hard working, and he's huge. Probably the easiest one, Gunnar Stockton. What goes through your mind with that guy? Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's a brother to me. I mean, guy that I can talk to anything about. I mean, he's a heck of a football player, and uh, I mean, he's just he's just a friend of me. I mean, he's everything you want in a quarterback, and I can't wait to play with him at the next level and room with him. Jake and Charlie, is that what you guys want to be? Probably they room <laughs> together and they play yeah. together? I mean, that, that's definitely something that could be happening. Um, we see about his touchdown. Um, wait, what, what? His touchdown. Oh, right? his touchdown, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I was right there on the goal line, so I kind of walled someone off and watched him just kind of diving right in front of me, and I was, I was super fired up for him. I mean, 
everyone, no one really knows except the people that watch this film. I mean, how much he can run, and how versatile he really is. Um, Julian Humphrey. Yeah, I mean, he's he's funny. He's awesome. I mean, he's got he's a super athletic, super cool. I mean, he's one of the dudes we were hanging out with all week at the hotel. I mean, he's just awesome, dude. Griffin Scrox. I mean, he's he's. I'm in the hotel room with him right now this week, so he's super cool. I mean, he's a heck of a center, I and mean, he can block. I mean, I think he got almost every rep this week because there wasn't any other centers. And uh, I mean, he's super. Just another one that's just a friend. He's awesome. Jordan James. I mean, he he's quiet. He's one of the, one on the quieter side, but I mean, he can run the ball. He he's one of the. He made some crazy catches this week. So I mean, he can definitely. He kind of reminds me a lot of James Cook. I mean, he can do really all that. He can run receive all that stuff so i mean he's gonna be a, a good player the nylon i mean that, that's that's my boy i mean we've always been uh doing camps and working out together since last year and i mean he he's he was one of the guys that was really standing out in uh, practice when we were up there in bowl practice and he's gonna do some big things up there michael yeah i mean he, it speaks for himself i mean he's this week was one of the one weeks where I got really close with uh, Michael and uh, Marvin, just hanging out with them the whole time, and it was super cool just getting on them, talking to them. And I mean, I, I really feel good about those two. I mean, they're going to be crazy together. And Michael is just—he's he, unstoppable. I mean, he knows every move and the way. Just he's super genuine. I mean, he's—he's he's always just—he's he's really funny. Also, I mean, people don't see that side of him outside of football, but I mean, he's really a guy that you can just hang out with and uh, chill around. Is he better than you thought he was? I mean, I knew he was good, but I've never seen him in person until this week. So, I mean, I, that, this week got me really excited. And I guess the last one you touched on a little bit, but Marvin Jones Jr., man. What's yeah, I came in, I didn't know Marvin at all, haven't talked to him. He, he was pretty quiet at first, but, I mean, he opened up, and, I mean, he's a heck of a player. I mean, him and Mike are going to be insane together. I mean, they're kind of the one-two punch combo. I mean, he, he can move, he's super athletic, and uh, he's going to be a really good player. You're going to watch the game on Monday in Athens with all the other guys? Oh, yeah, I mean, we'll all be up there watching. I think they're going to put it on for us in the practice facility, so it's going to be fun. Oscar Delp, man, on his way to UGA. Um, you should have seen the way he took care of all the kids after this game. A really, truly genuine dude. Oscar, thank you so much for your time. Always, thank you. Appreciate you. All right, guys, that was Oscar Delp. Uh, quite the interview, quite the young man to sit down and talk to uh, at all times. Uh, we're going to be rolling out one of those probably every week for the next seven or eight, nine weeks. I think I've, there were 11 of those guys I got to visit with. Um in the uh, respective All-American games. So we'll have one of those every week. Um, be on the lookout tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be on the lookout tomorrow. I'll have something um, on the video side and also on the printed word side with uh, Christian Miller as well. Everybody's kind of focused in and wondering on Christian Miller. Christian Miller just got off of a pretty decent little, pretty impactful visit for him to Oregon. Uh, he's going to FM, Florida A&M, FAMU this weekend. And then the final weekend of the month, the 29th, he's going to be uh, at the U checking out Miami and Coach Cristobal. Uh, Ohio State, Georgia, maybe Oregon a little bit, I think, I think are in there a little bit. For, for me, uh, I know he told me yesterday that he went in home with both. Um, he had some in-home visits yesterday, and that's Georgia. Uh, that's Ohio State uh, yesterday. Always uh, going to be the two schools that are just kind of going neck and neck like rock and, rock'em sock'em mo robots for uh, – for Christian Miller, Shamar Stewart's going to take his official visit. That's still planned for this weekend. I do think Georgia uh, is not in the best spot there, considering uh, relative to where uh, Miami and then Texas A&M are for Shamar Stewart. Uh, man, if they added another guy like that in the defensive class, even if they just added Miller to the defensive class, it's going to make the best defensive class of uh, the Kirby Smart era, in my mind, even bigger, bigger, better, and bolder. Um, in the coming years, in the coming uh, seasons to come. You've got a lot. We've got a lot of people people here wondering about the, the Jermaine Burton decision to drop into the portal. Uh, JT Daniels also goes into the portal. There's also looming thoughts on a num lot of other number number of players on the roster. I think I've seen on the, the two chat streams on both Facebook and YouTube, everybody's wondering about Darnell Washington. And I'll be honest, I've heard both sides of this. I've heard a lot about Darnell Washington one way, and I've heard a lot about Darnell Washington the other way. That one has seemed to have fluctuated over the last five to seven days um, in terms of Darnell Washington. So I know everybody will be watching and waiting and wondering about that one um, as one of the, you know, what's the next shoe to drop in this class? I mean, what's the next shoe to drop with somebody hitting the portal off this uh, national championship roster for the Georgia Bulldogs? Uh, as we started off in the beginning of our show, uh, we talked about the many reasons why I feel that the 2022 class was built to offset a lot of these migrations 
whether it's the defensive linemen and the linebackers and the running backs to the NFL, uh, the offensive linemen to the NFL, or the transfer portal guys, especially where Georgia's getting hit really hard. Uh, they're bringing in a, another group of wide receivers. They don't have a five-star or a top 100 receiver in this class. They've got explosive players like uh, I think C.J. Smith has that type of Arian Smith burst, some rare speed. He's actually a football player, guys, not a track guy. Oscar Delp, I think, can give you uh, – it would not shock me at all if Oscar Delp's freshman season at Georgia had something like 60%, uh, 60 to 70% of the production that uh, – uh, Brock Bowers put together maybe not seven or eight touchdowns, but I think five or six touchdowns. I think Oscar Delp is just that type of capable and athlete in a similar vein uh, can do the same sort of similar production wise things uh, that Brock Bowers did in his freshman season. Uh, a lot of stuff to get to. We'll focus on the 2022 class and a really big extended look at the 2023 class. I've had the chance to talk to a lot of 2023 recruits that were at Georgia in Athens over the weekend for the championship celebration. Victor Burley is already on the site that went up yesterday. I mean, excuse me, on, yeah, Monday. And then Justice Haynes went up on Tuesday. Very thought-provoking and interesting interviews with both of those guys. We'll have more on that. But right now, this is Before the Hedge is brought to you by Kroger, our valued and trusted sponsor for probably over five or six years now here for Dog Nation's Wednesday night live recruiting program. I'm Jeff Sintel. And while we're thanking Kroger, Let's take, take this moment right now to get a word from Kroger and learn a little bit about some national championship. 41 years in the making, uh, hot wings, barbecued wings, grilled wings here from Chef John. All right, Dog Nation, I've got Chef John here with Kroger. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take that tailgate to national championship standards. Chef John, we got some three-star wing recipes. How do we take it to the next level? Jeff, you've heard of buffalo wings, you've heard of barbecue wings. We're gonna take these to the next level. What we're gonna do is an orange garlic glazed wing. All right, John, now normally, my friends do not allow the color orange at the tailgate. Trusting you, man. You're gonna love these. We're gonna get grilling right now. This is a garlic orange glazed wing. Made in marinade last night. It's with orange juice, brown sugar, garlic, salt and pepper, a little bit of butter and some hot sauce. Absolutely fantastic. So I didn't bring my own container in the marinade. I brought it in a Ziploc bag. Why? So I don't have to worry about washing, but also it's quick and easy to dispose of it and nice and clean and sanitary. Wings hot off the grill. All right, guys. Been hearing some good intel about this one. Mmm. You know what, dog fans? This is the type of orange you want at your tailgate. Dog Nation, you just got a five-star upgrade to your tailgate menu. Check out dognation.com all season long for tailgate tips and recipes brought to you by Kroger. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I'm seeing a, a, some uh, comments in the threads on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to kind of sift through the weeds with my weed eater a little bit there. I appreciate uh, the kind comments from folks like Christy and folks that are uh, policing. Uh, we got Mr. Smith uh, Sr., Smith Falk Sr. in the in the house. Sir, thanks for joining us. Kirby's visor is calling it a war zone. I think I can see a question here about Arch Manning. Uh, I think Georgia is in a very good spot there with Arch Manning. I think Georgia would be at least in the top two uh, with Arch Manning, if not first place overall. Uh, very interesting to see with that one uh, keep going down the tracks over the next uh, couple of months. Um, any other questions out here before I jump into uh, some more of our program stuff? Um, <laughs> Ryan M. wants a new recipe. This is the same one for the past two months. Well, hey, Ryan, man, that recipe has worked, man. That, that came up with it. Those are some natty wings. We're going to have to call them. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the word natty and people talking about natties, uh, consuming natties. Um, I'll leave it right there about after the national uh, championship uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, Monk and Ted said, how are you doing tonight? So let's let's do this. Uh, we have, you know, the normal things every week, you know, the top targets list keeps shrinking. There's really just three top targets, uh, two or three top targets. I think I've added a third one this week. That's EJ Lightsey, the linebacker out of South Georgia, Fitzgerald, Georgia. He's number three. Number two is Shamar Stewart, who we talked about that would be in town 
uh, this weekend on his official visit. And number one remains Christian Miller. He's recovering nicely from his uh, uh, situation he had with a uh, meniscus tear and some uh, slight dislocations in his knee. Uh, he was work- walking around on his official visit in Oregon without the knee brace and making taking pictures without the knee, ma- knee brace. It was good to see. Shamar Stewart and uh, Christian Miller will both make their decisions known on February the 2nd. Um, taking a look at the recruiting breakdown, uh, this is where it still stands. 24 uh, signees, three guys are committed. Jordan James, I think that's a guy everybody's going to play wait and see on. I wonder um, whether he w- still remains in Georgia's class. He has a strong connection to Georgia's class. Remember, he told me out in Texas that the reason he didn't sign during the early period was he said his family was on a vacation. They were on a cruise. They were on a boat. And he still sounded very proud and sounded very happy to be a Georgia Bulldog. Florida did an in-home visit recently with Jordan James. Oklahoma, Auburn, Florida State, other schools are coming after him. Uh, I would think this would be a case where uh, Jordan James would would be in the Georgia class if Georgia has room for him in the Georgia class and that they want him in the Georgia class. That is my projection there. Georgia's class uh, eight of the top 12 guys we talked about, kind of another generational defense for Georgia. A blueprint has been laid. Eight of the top 12 guys are uh, defensive players. Uh, number three nationally, 13 offense, 13 defense, one special teamer, 17 out of state, 10 in state, uh, five five stars. All those guys are on defense, nine top 50 signees. Uh, 12 top 100 signees and 13 top 150 signees. Alabama has a higher rated class and Texas A&M probably is going to wind up with the best class in modern recruiting history. Um, That's what you have right there for this class. Um, Like we said earlier, we expect, I think Dylan Bell got a visit from Kirby uh, this week out in Texas. Uh, Dylan kind of reaffirmed that everything was uh, all good with the dogs he would be signing with Georgia on February the 3rd. Again, Georgia needs those receiver type players. I I hear a common uh, player parallel for Dylan Bell. Maybe the type of guy that would give you a lot of the things that uh, Debo Samuel does, did for South Carolina. And also right now he's doing for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Moving forward, one of the things we're going to get get into, uh, the 2023 classes I know is on everybody's mind right now. I've re- fashioned and put together a brand new top targets list. We go down to, I think, 14 guys in this list right now. Uh, number 14 is a guy, Tamarian Parker, out of Central Phoenix City, Alabama, really is feeling a certain type of way about Georgia. I think Tamarian is actually the 13th guy in this class. Tony Mitchell, A.J. Harris, I've got those cornerbacks down considerably from recent years because I recent weeks with this top targets list for 2023 because I think they are looking at that what I said earlier, a generational defensive back class that Georgia just signed. Uh, Dell McGee was in Texas to see Reuben Owens, the second, a guy who ran for 3,200 yards and 46 touchdowns as a junior in class 4A ball in Texas. Number nine, Trayon Webb. Uh, he was at Georgia for the gala. It was actually his second straight trip to Georgia. He was a guy that was once committed to Georgia and then committed to Oklahoma. He decommitted from Oklahoma after the Lincoln Riley move. And now he is looking very closely at Georgia once again. Kelby Collins is a big-time top 100 defensive end out of Gardendale, Alabama. Caden McDonald, another guy that Kirby went to go see prior to the championship gala at his school. He landed the Kirby Copter at North Gwinnett. A new name on the list is a guy that I think that was in Athens on Saturday, and I think he is as important to this class as any of the next seven names I'm going to name. Caleb Downs out of Mill Creek. His dad is a college coach. Uh, his older brother is Josh Downs, who victimized the ACC in his first season at North Carolina. LT Overton, I'd look for him to start cutting down his list sometime soon. Uh, Justice Haynes, we wrote about Justice Haynes extensively on Dog Nation on Tuesday. And I've talked to Justice a lot of times. And for me, that was the first time where Justice really sounded like he was moving closer to making his decision. He used some phrasing that he could make the decision in a short term. Um, window for the first time instead of just looking far out. Uh, He was really impressed by Georgia. He thinks Georgia has something special. Some of the marquee quotes he gave me was he he made mention that uh, Kirby said that we're recruiting you for new you, not just who your father was and that your father played here. He said that Georgia really made him feel special. Uh, Everybody knew his name. It was a great visit 
uh, for Justice Haynes at Georgia. Number four is the five-star edge Malik Bryant. He's going to be at Miami this weekend. Number three, Arch Manning, the Manning legacy out of New Orleans, Louisiana. He's moved up to number three. Number two is the 2023 five-star Janelle Aguero. He will be in Athens this weekend on an unofficial visit and the new number one. I don't know if you had a chance to read that story. I sure hope you did because love how Victor Burley works with the special needs kids in his school. I love how he, uh, I was told that story by his head coach at Warner Robins about when the Pledge of Allegiance was being um, broadcast across the school, the head coach gets to see the cameras in his office and he saw the school cameras and he saw big Vic Burley walking through the halls. And then the Pledge of Allegiance was being said in the hallways. Victor Burley stopped and he also stretched out a big Vic Burley five star paw and halted the gentleman that was the young gentleman that was walking by him so they both could stand at attention and stand at re respect to the Pledge of Allegiance. Really, really was impressed by how Kirby Smart was stopped a photo shoot when he was getting ready to leave with his family and went and talked to him about how they need defensive players like him to build the next national champion at Georgia. It is my feeling here that Clemson was in a very good spot with Victor Burley before the uh, staff upheaval and the changes there at Clemson with Brent Venables moving to Oklahoma. I think that's given Georgia a strong opportunity to come in really hard for Victor Burley out of Warner Robins in the 2023 class. One thing about Victor is he told me that he's expecting his recruiting to kind of go the long game. He's not expecting to make a decision anytime soon. Um, some names that we placed down there to consider – uh, C.J. Allen, who was at the gala on Saturday, Justin Benton, Santana Fleming, Jamal Jarrett, a guy you're going to read about him in the coming days on DogNation.com. Jamal Jarrett, there's a picture of Jamal Jarrett side by side with Jordan Davis. And those two uh, are basically side by side. The high school junior, Jamal Jarrett, also out of North Carolina. He played at the same high school, which sent Travis Shaw to, to North Carolina. Uh, he was in Athens, and he was very impressed on Saturday. Xavier Hardy, Gabe Harris, Brandon Ennis, very close with Trayon Webb there. A five-star offensive lineman out of IMG Academy, Francis Mayuga. Uh, Xavier McLeod, a guy out of Camden, South Carolina. He was in Athens at the gala on Saturday. Madden Sanker, another in-state wrestling champion, All-American, uh, top 100 overall prospect in Douglasville. He was at the gala again. You've got James Smith uh, out of uh, Montgomery, Alabama five-star defensive lineman, uh, Jaden Wayne. Those are kind of the names right now that are brewing for the 2023 class, certainly very early, but the most important positions for Georgia to restock in 2023 are offensive tackle, wide receiver, running back, and outside linebacker. I'm going to stress offensive tackle, and I'm going to stress wide receiver. Wide receiver recruiting is going to be the thing uh, going forward. I think all you good people want to hear about are those elite electric restock reinforcements wide receivers that are coming to the University of Georgia. Running back and outside linebackers will also be at a premium. We will also take a look at our uh, recruiting breakdown for 2023 for the first time. There's nine commits. Lawson Lucky just committed recently. Another legacy tied in. He committed to Georgia. That moved Georgia to the number one spot in 2023. This class has six guys on offense, three on defense, five in state, four out of state, no five stars yet, no top 50 commits, but five top 100 signees, six top 150 signees. Every one of those nine commitments are in the SEC footprint. And see how the, the script is being flipped a little bit. The emphasis is being flipped a little bit. There are currently four offensive players, including two wide receivers in Raymond Cottrell and Dequavius uh, Sore, both two top 100 receivers. Uh, and also Pierce Sperling, who's a top 100 tight end. Uh, there are four offensive players that are rated among the five highest rated commitments in the 2023 class. Georgia folks, my friends, they have the number one recruiting class with nine commitments as well for the class of 2023. There you go, my friends. Uh, that is a good look at all things Georgia football recruiting. We talked at, at the opening to our show uh, about um, – all the ways I think this 2022 class will be a restocking of the shells for Georgia at a championship level. So when you see transfer portal stories, you see future transfer portal stories, you see guys going to the NFL. It is just the nature of college football at the highest level. You look at all the guys that Alabama has lost 
since the national championship game. A lot of guys are portaling out from that great program as well. And here's what we're going to do. What's Jeff, what's Jeff going to do for the next maybe five, 10 minutes of the show? We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to A, I want you guys to tell me about that national championship Georgia won, about that gala that Georgia won. Because, folks, I think people are kind of getting a little bit too much lost, lost trying to find the golf ball out in the rough uh, in the midst of all these portal news. You know, Stetson Bennett comes back. JT Daniels portals out. Um, Jermaine Burton portals out. Lots of these guys are going to the NFL. John Fitzpatrick, uh, among some of the more recent guys that have moved on to the NFL. Robert Beal comes back. That's Georgia's leading pass rusher. Nolan Smith comes back. Georgia wins a national championship. I want each of you guys to tell me if you were at the gala on Saturday, what's one moment? Maybe it's a player interaction. Maybe it's just goosebumps. Maybe it's, you know, the public address announcer, Brooke Whitmire. Uh, saying that national champion Georgia Bulldogs as everybody got back in Sanford Stadium again. I want each of you guys, if you can, to tell me your one moment uh, from that championship celebration on Saturday, if you were there, maybe it's on the parade route. If you weren't there, I want you to tell me one sort of thing that will always stay with you from that day. Because I want to hear them. I was sitting there working. Richard Dees uh, makes a point. Richard, thanks for checking in. Um, says, Richard says he's been told by uh, Jeff and others not to be surprised or concerned with the moves, and therefore I'm relaxing and trusting the process. I think we were on cover four a while back when I think uh, I think a lot of us on their program expressed the fact that Georgia probably see about 14 or 15 guys go to the NFL, and they probably see about 10 to 12 guys hit the transfer portal. That's kind of part of the deal. Tenille K. Calvino, I think that's a that's one of the things I was trying to rise above it all. It's crazy to see such and feel such division nine, nine days after a championship. Uh, Munkin's headset calls it the greatest days ever. Munkin, you got to have a lot of great days living in Chatham County. I lived in Tybee Island for two or three years out of college, and those were great days, my friend. Uh, Ryan M., I like this. His best part of it was Jordan Davis with the Braves. Jersey. Uh, Hayes, he was in Athens on Saturday with your mom. Did you get any good pictures with anybody? Uh, Brian McPhail, I think the scholarship count is going to need a little bit more flexing, uh, especially with those guys that are yet to arrive, uh, that did, were not able to arrive in January, and they'll have to come in May, uh, and also the guys that have yet to sign. Again, what really matters here are the guys that um, once they get on campus and enroll, that's where the scholarship number has to be at 85. <laughs> Munkin's headset party like it was 1980. I'm sure you did. Um, let me see. Facebook, my friends. Um, going down the line. Um, let me see. Shelton Tucker, uh, John Foster, I think I'm just seeing this. Pickens has made a statement. Pickens is going to the NFL. He released it on his Instagram account a couple of days ago. Um, let me see. Uh, people are talking, Chris, uh, Jay Swain, you guys have just jumping on the program. Let me make sure you guys know this probably around six o'clock today, uh, five 30 or so. There was a tremendous news dump where, uh, JT Daniels name was showing up in the portal that was reported. That was announced that was released. Uh, so was Jermaine Burton's name and going into the portal. He released it on his Instagram account as well. 
He said that it was a very hard decision, but he feels the best thing for him to do is enter his name, enter his name into the transfer portal. Right about that same time is when Stetson Bennett um, released uh, simply a page on his instant Instagram story that said, I believe it said, um, run it back or let's go. Stetson Bennett said that he was coming back for one more year. Yeah, he said, let's roll. And he also will use that platform as another chance to participate and promote for the DGD fund. Folks, I know you want to sit there and think the sky is falling. The sky is not falling. The sky is pretty stinking cool. Uh, Georgia has won its first national championship in 41 years. And the amount of talent that they're coming in to offset all those dudes going to the NFL, Georgia is has had will probably have 13, 14 guys selected in the draft. I think the previous high was nine. Uh, they're going to blow that one out of the water. Uh, the players coming in are some of the finest and deepest group of defensive players. Uh, you've got a lot of those pieces on offense as well to reload a little bit and to add to what Brock Bowers can do with a guy like Oscar Delt. You've got um, running back like Branson Robinson. You've got a top 40 offensive lineman like Ernest Green the third. You got Gunnar Stockton, who basically owns almost every career passing record uh, in the Georgia high school record books. And he uh, looked pretty good on a field full of his peers out in San Antonio as well. His ability to run and create plays with his legs was still there. I think the ball he threw had as much velocity and accuracy on it as any of those quarterbacks that were deemed uh, the nation's best in the All-Americans there out in Texas. Um, really, really strong guys. And, and when, when you see what, the, what, what I want to kind of leave with you guys is this. The past is the past. The present is a national cha championship. Georgia will defend a national championship this fall. They were probably going to be favored by at least 10 points in every game they play uh, next season until they get to the SEC championship game. And then um, the present, when I look at the future, when I look at all these players that have signed that are already on campus, um, you guys just don't know the stories and the motivations um, behind guys like Big Bear Alexander, Michael Williams, uh, Marvin Jones Jr. But it's my job to share those with you and tell them to you. Uh, as best as I possibly can. This is a loaded stack group. Uh, a lot of the, like I said, in one of our opening moments, I think this 2022 class was built for this uh, to kind of offset the staggering amount of personnel losses that will be off the national championship roster in 2021. Um, everybody's going to start taking a really good look now at um, the 2023 class. We went through a really strong, um, we went through a really strong uh, look at that. You guys got to remember Ladd McConkey, how big of a part of the offense he was. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, uh, I think he'll be one of the signature players uh, going forward for that catch he made in the national championship game. Uh, Brock Bowers will be back. Uh, Broderick Jones will be back. Marius Mims will step into a deeper role. You've got Cedric Von Prahn Granger coming back. Tate Ratledge will be fully healthy. Think how much better that offensive line would have been if Tate Ratledge had started the entire 2021 campaign. Kenny McIntosh, uh, Dejon Edwards, Kendall Milton. Um, the, the RBU group is still very, very loaded. Um, you've got uh, Denylon Morissette, who looked very, very good when he came into Athens and worked on over bowl practices. That's an All-American wide receiver. Chandler Smith is even rated higher than Denylon Morissette. And you've got those gobs and gobs of defensive backs and pass rushers and defensive tackles. Um, when you look at everything and you look at the playing field and you can see the pretty true reading of the green right now, I still think it is a great time to be covering Georgia Bulldog football and Georgia Bulldog recruiting as a journalist and as a reporter. And I certainly think if you guys follow uh, the fan base, the fan base out there, and I think those of you that follow this program and also follow the Before the Hedges program that were in Athens on Saturday, uh, going uh, beyond bonkers in a way that Mr. Munson would was certainly smiling down and appreciative of everything that was going on in the classic city. Um, I, I really don't know what all the doom and gloom would be out there right now. Even those venomous folks on social media that just want to see the world burn. Uh, it is a great time uh, again here on Before the Hedges, another Wednesday night with all of you guys. I'm Jeff Sintel. I want to say thank you to Kroger. I want to say thanks to every one of you guys for joining us. You could be anywhere here on a 
Wednesday night, but you chose to be here talking about Georgia Bulldog football uh, again for another time. I want to thank you for this 60 minutes that you gave me. Hopefully I've given you guys some things, given you something. You don't have to go out and punch a hole in the wall or go kick the can down the, down the driveway when it comes to Georgia football and Georgia football recruiting. That's the aim. That's the emphasis here on Before the Hedges. I'm Jeff Sintel. God bless you, everybody out there. Uh, be safe. Uh, love the folks you love. Hug everybody's neck on your way out the door and be thankful when you come home every night. I'm Jeff Sintel. Uh, we will see you guys all again later on the pages of dognation.com. Take it easy, everybody. Be well.